Doctor, if, if somebody has uh, their fillings taken out, mercury fillings taken out, what's a good way to do the next step and, and clean the body and detox the body from that? Or will it do it on its own, like you said? Or there's some things you can do to help it? Well, you want to support the, the body with nutrition. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, I think that that's the, the first and foremost. There are doctors out there that, um, that will do chelation therapy. Um, I personally am not a fan of that. I do know that it has a time and a place. Um, and I will leave that up to those medical doctors to choose that time and place. But um, it's been my own personal experience for rushing out and getting that done. That was a bad idea. Hmm. Um, once again, it's pulling the metals from their hiding place into the bloodstream for excretion. You can only excrete so much, mm -hmm. you know. And, um, and so what happens is then it comes into the blood and then maybe it goes from this fat molecule to this fat molecule. You know, so it gets, it's redistributing, sure. re-toxifying, re if you will. So um, I would say uh, what I recommend is uh, natural means of detox. Light lymphatic drainage. Uh, you can use a rebounder. You can use uh, infrared saunas. Um, I refer to practitioners to, um, to basically handle the detox if, if somebody wants uh, uh, you know, uh, more hands-on detox. And, and typically they're not going to be doing any kind of, chelation is a drug. I mean, they're EDTA, DMSA mm -hmm. um, is an oral one, DMPS is another IV, and um, penicillamine is another way. Um, these are actually drugs that you're taking to get a metal toxin mm -hmm. out. So it's kind of an oxymoron. Um, you know, you got to, put one bad in to get one bad out. So I recommend high dose IV vitamin C, hyperbarics, um, and you can do, if you don't have access to IV vitamin C, I recommend Live On Lab vitamin C. Um, it's a nanosphere technology, so um, mm. it's better absorbed in the GI. High dose vitamin C. Vitamin C will pull out your good uh, metals too. So you have to be mindful of that. So um, that's why it's best to be done under the supervision of someone. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the few people that have gone off on their own, um, uh, didn't, it didn't work for them. <laughs> and and I, I can count three in my practice and mm -hmm. since I've been doing this. Three went on their own and uh, they went down for the count. Got more sick. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. um, they came back up, the two did, one still down. Um, but working on that, mm -hmm. so, but you, you can't, you, you can't, uh, you, you can't miss that most important piece. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, when I say an otherwise healthy individual, well, you better make sure you're otherwise a healthy individual. You know, mm -hmm. if you're just going to go to somebody and have your amalgams taken out, because you, I thought I was healthy. I mean, I thought I was just having issues. You know, I had no idea. I had no idea how sick I was until after I wasn't sick, and I looked mm -hmm. back and said, holy cow. But fortunately, I had written down all my symptoms. Um, oh, okay. You know, so I was able to, to look back. And I do recommend uh, diaries, you know, mm -hmm. so that patients can see where they were, you know, so if they're still struggling with a few issues, go, but do you remember when you first presented, <laughs> you know, sure. how many real bad issues you had? Yeah. So. Um, so they can kind of monitor their progress. So yeah, I mean it's wonderful. I love what I do. I mean it's it's life changing. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful gift that I do not take lightly.